na o sana o sana in the heart let our king believe that up o sana be lifted higher higher be lifted higher oh jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher oh Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher, yes, yes, let our King be lifted up, let our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up, O Sana. Heavenly Father, we lift you up this morning. Lord Jesus, we worship you, we honor you, we glorify you. Father, Lord God Almighty, we have come again in your presence this day, O God, the day of worship, Father Lord, to worship you, O God, in a corporate way. Father Lord, receive your praise and your glory today from our mouths, from the mouths of your children, O God Almighty, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God Almighty, come and take control, come and take your place in this ministry tonight. Father Lord, this ministry belongs to you. This worship service belongs to you. Father Lord, come and be exalted in our midst, O Lord. Father, we worship you, we praise you, we glorify you. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Take absolute control. Take control of all the speakers this morning. Take control of all the ministers. Take control of all the members, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let every flesh die in the mighty name of Jesus. And let Jesus alone be glorified in this place this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We are going to start the discipleship class now by the grace of God. We are going to be streaming um, a video from the Vision Bearer um, for the first section. So just bear with me. Yeah, I'm also live on YouTube also. <laughs> um, I'm also live on YouTube, just like I'm live on Facebook. Uh, and we're going to be looking at something uh, it's the dying to self. Um, God wants our flesh to be crucified, and uh, that's the only way we can become like Jesus. And I believe we're going to become like Him. So please, let's use the share button uh, so that many other persons are going to be blessed. And for those watching on YouTube, also, um, I, I think this is my first live video that I'm, I'm going to be doing um, uh, on Facebook and on YouTube at the same time. Um, so I encourage us to do one thing also. For those on YouTube, um, do well to join our tonight's power pack when we go to the gym. And we're going to be looking at dying to self. Jesus wants you to die. Your flesh needs to be crucified and die and die. So it's the dying of Jesus. And um, that's what we're going to be looking at today. And um, I'm going to be speaking from my heart. And um, I don't want to be giving a lot of scriptures and scriptures and scriptures and scriptures. So it's not going to be a time of prophecy and all the rest. Um, but if you understand the dying of Jesus, don't you want to die? Um, God wants me to die. He wants me to die and die and die and die and die and die and die, and die until I can become like Jesus. Um, some people are also on YouTube watching also. Uh, for those on YouTube also, um, God bless you all. Uh, I see you all in the name of Jesus. Almighty immortal. So let's do well, share and invite as many others also to join tonight's today's ministration. We die to self. We die to self. Oh, sorry, I'm going to correct that. Thanks. Uh, thanks, my sister. God bless you. Also. Okay. 
I think let me go, let me reduce this theme song. I love him so much. <laughs> Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Lord. Um, you do something in our life. Your children are going to die. Um, as many of us are going to die, and we are going to understand the way of the cross, how we can become like Jesus. If we can become like Jesus, Lord, in life and in character, we can have his power, and the fire of the Holy Ghost can be released on the earth, and your children can be prepared for the rapture of the saints, oh Lord. Oh Lord, do your work, Lord. Purify your children. Let them understand holiness. Holiness is, is the inward life, is the beauty of heaven itself, and let their name be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, look, look at something I'm going to be showing you from scripture. Just check the Bible. Look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians uh, 2, um, 4. Uh, this is the teaching part of my ministry also, uh, not just the prophetic part. Uh, so when we look at the, um, 2 Corinthians um, 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 2, verse um, um, 4, um, look at what it tells you there. And it says, For out of much affliction and anguish of the heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, and that ye should not be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. Also, okay, as, as, we, as we keep moving forward, um, there is something I want us to understand. I'm not here to give us much of scripture, but I want us to understand something that God desires something from his children. If you want to become like Jesus, we talk about his crucified life. You can also enjoy the resurrection life of Jesus. Now, if I'm like Jesus, you will see that the power of the Holy Ghost will be free to manifest in your life and all the rest. And one of the reasons why Christians have not had grace to overcome sin and grace to overcome loss, and grace to overcome so many things that they don't want to die. And uh, every day of your life, the Holy Ghost presents to you a measure for you to die. And you know, for you to die to all those things that you want and all the rest. There are many things I desire. You know, I desire to want to gratify myself, and I desire to want to exalt myself, and I desire to want to be mighty on the earth, and I desire to want to be glorious on the earth and all the rest. And I desire possibly to want to absorb authority and all the rest. But you know what God is saying there? She does say, you have to die. Now, if you don't learn to die, you cannot understand what it means to be crucified with Jesus Christ himself. And that's why you hear people talking about holiness, 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 holiness. Holiness is not just um, all those outward. I've been trying to make Christians understand that holiness is not just, you know, removing all those things on your body and all the rest. It's the deep inner life of Jesus Christ. Every day Jesus Christ was dying, 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 dying. You see, he said, not my will. It was not just his will to just go to the cross like that. But he says, let thy will be done and all the rest in your life. See, one of the reasons why we worry so much, you know, we worry about a lot of things is because we don't know who our Heavenly Father is. And we don't know we have a mighty father. And we don't know we have a glorious father that sits on his throne. If you truly know who your father is, you will never worry. You will not worry on some certain things. You will not allow worry to take charge of your life and all the rest because we worry too much about a lot of things. How is this great? But if you understand that it's no more you, it's Jesus living inside of you, then you tell the Holy Spirit every day, teach me to die. Teach me to die. There are so many things that you want on your own. In short, there are so many of our prayers that we make that are so self-centered and all the rest. But when Jesus begins to teach you to die, you will know that you know that it's no more about you. It's Jesus that lives in you. And that's why the Apostle Paul was saying something. He says, the dying to self, the dying, it says, the dying of Jesus. He says, bearing on my mark, there must be the mark of Jesus Christ on your body. What's the mark of Jesus on your body? The mark of Jesus in your life and in my life is the mark of suffering. And it's the mark of trouble. The mark of tribute. And it's the mark of all kinds of things that you can see. But you must allow God to allow these things to have between your life and all the rest. And that's what the Bible now says in James 4. If you read down, you know, we did our morning devotion today and we looked at James chapter 4. And it was talking about some wonderful things there. And um, it was talking about some wonderful things there in, in James chapter 4. Look at what it says. It says, it, it says here in, in 4, it says, um, do not be friends of this world and all the rest, but I'm going to verse 2. Verse 2 of chapter 4, look at what it says here. It says, Ye lost and have not, ye killed and desire to have and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, and yet ye have not 
because he asked not. And what is the war he's talking about? And what is the fighting he's talking about? It's not a physical battle. It's something that has to do with inside of your spirit, man. There is so much of war taking place. A lot of battle on who is going to take over. Is it my spirit or my flesh? And who is going to have it? Who is going to be exalted? My brothers and sisters, every day Jesus is teaching you one thing. Would you be able to die? Would you be able to give up your ambition? Would you be able to give up your desire just to walk with your master and just to become like Jesus? If you're like Jesus, you're not going to be thinking of, am I going to go to hell? And am I going to go to heaven? And am I going to make it to the rapture? All those stuff and all the rest. Am I going to be thinking about, am I, am I going to make it to heaven or hell? And all this stuff and all the rest. If you're like Jesus, if you're like him, I'm telling you, you make it up to the rapture. You get to heaven by the special grace of God. Why are you worrying yourself? Why do we worry ourselves so much? It's because we don't understand who we are in Christ Jesus. But when you understand your authority, to understand your authority in Jesus is to understand your resurrection life. And to understand your resurrection life is to understand the crucified life. And when you understand the crucified life, you understand that it is Jesus trying to walk inside of you. It's no more you that is living anymore. Now it's Christ living inside of you. He tells you, Chenozie, I don't want you to go to Abuja right now. I want you to stay with me. Oh, Chenozie, I don't want you to talk like that. And I don't want you to live like that and all the rest. You keep dying. Normally, your normal body doesn't want to die. You don't want to die. Normally, my flesh doesn't want to die. My flesh wants a lot of things, you know. I want to be very much mighty on the earth. I want to be very much great and all the rest. I'm not talking about ministry. See, ministry is your life. Ministry is your life, you know. At some point in time, I, I, I went to... I I, I, get, I go to the bank and I wanted to get some money um for my for, for a particular program and I spoke to the cashier. The cashier wasted my time and gave me a lot of money, you know, that was in a little denomination. But you know what happened there? I began to speak to the cashier and said, Oh, why are you going to give me this kind of money and all the rest? I don't like this money you gave to me. You know, give me something better and all the rest. And you know what? After I left that place, then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Is Jesus going to talk the way he thought? And is Jesus going to walk like this and all the rest? And I said to myself, what? Just this little thing I did. I was not ready to die. See, listen to me. Every problem you go through in life, God is trying to make you to become like Jesus. Every problem I go through, see, there are some delays. You know, one of the things God tells me is that Jesus say you don't have patience. You're not patient enough. So, he's teaching me how to actually, so he's delayed. It delays me, it delays me, it delays so many of my prayer requests. It's teaching me so that you can be patient. Are you seeing that the more you decide to die, the more you understand why God is allowing a lot of things to happen in your life. Everything might not be demon and principality. I'm a deliverance minister and all the rest. I've been giving grace to a fivefold ministry. But I've come to the understanding that, my brothers and sisters, there are many things you should not worry about. It's Jesus trying to teach you to become like him. Many problems. Many problems you are going through. Why, why is it that the marriage is happening like that? If the marriage does not happen like that, how would you know that you have self-control? See, you cannot understand you have self-control if your is not tested. Like, if your, if your temperament is not tested. It's God trying to make you to become like Jesus, you know? Many people are doing a lot of things, you know? There are, there are a lot of people, there, there, there was a young man, you know? And all the rest. I, I thought he should be appreciative and all the rest. You know what? You did somebody and their person is doing evil back to you and all the rest. You know what? I, I, I wanted to get angry in my spirit a little bit. But Jesus, the, the spirit of God ministered to me and I, I'm the one allowing these things. It's me. I'm trying to kill this your flesh and all the rest. I'm trying to make you understand that people will offend you and people will revive against you and people will crucify you. That's the mark of Jesus on my body. And that's what the Apostle Paul says, bearing in my body the mark of Jesus, the mark of Jesus, dying of Jesus. Don't you want to die? Desire to die, my brother. Desire to die, my sister. Desire to die. 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 Tell the Lord I want to die. I want to die. I'm not talking about the physical body. Tell the Lord, I want to die. I want my flesh to be dead. I want my dead. I want so many things. I'm telling you the simple truth. If you understand this message I'm trying to preach to you, if you tell the demon, get away, it gets away in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if you say, rise up, it rises up in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you command anything you command, we have its way. Why? Because the power of Jesus is now living inside of you. It's no more you. You now sit on the throne of Jesus. You now understand the authoritative life of Jesus and the crucified life of Jesus. Don't you 
want to die? Don't you want to die? One of the reasons why we have a lot of problems in the world, a lot of are not working. You know that. The wife doesn't want to die. The husband doesn't want to die. If two people are living, listen to me. If you are dead and somebody beats you, are you going to understand what is happening to your body and all the rest? You're just like Jesus. People were insulting Jesus. People could be saying to Jesus, look at you, you're a pastor. Was it, was it, was it Mary? How, wait, wait, where's your father? Where's your father? Where's your father? How did Mary give birth to you? But Jesus was dying. He was dying. Listen to me. The death of Jesus is not just it's not just attained to just the one that happened on the cross. It was happening on a daily basis. He was dying every day of his life. He was dying every day of his life. He was dying. He wanted food to eat, but no food to eat. He had to say to himself, you know, I think it was some yesterday night or day before yesterday night. I, I was so busy, maybe because I was busy with ministry. I was busy with trying to do some certain things. And I forgot that I should eat or I should have my dinner and all the rest of I woke up around 11 or so, and I'm like, I'm hungry, you know. And I'm like, I'm hungry because <laughs> I have not, um, I have not eaten um, anything. And um, praise the Lord, I, I hope. Uh, praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. What a powerful message about dying to self. May the Lord give us the grace to die to self in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Okay. So we have about maybe 20. Three more minutes or so to finish the sermon if we are going to finish before um, about maybe 20 minutes before time for questions and answers. So we are going to go straight into the live Praise teachings. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I, just, I, I felt that the message was little. 
also because the network cut me out during the life ministration. So I felt that, you know, that we should play it before we just take a little bit. So because of time, I'm just going to take a little bit of, uh, I prepared a message also for today's discipleship class also. Uh, so, but I'm going to be brief so that um, possibly we can go to question and answers if we have. Okay. Um, so we are welcome to today's discipleship class. I, I wonder why some of us uh, are still coming late. Um, Heavenly Father, King of all glory, I thank you, Lord, and I bless you, Lord, for it's a privilege to preach your word to your own people, Lord. Every day, Lord, to minister is a privilege, Lord. No matter how many times we do this, Lord God Almighty, let thy name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so uh, um, I have um, a little message here. So how did Jesus grow in love? Um, because in today's Sunday fire service, we will be um, expounding more on um, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay. And um, how did Jesus grow in love? That's, that's another thing. Okay. Let's let somebody read from John, John 13, 35. Um, John 13, 35. Um, otherwise, some part of my Bible are um, thrown away, but I know that I have another part. Um, but I don't want to use that Bible. Praise the Lord. We can read if we are there, anybody there. Praise the Lord. Okay, hallelujah. We read John 13, 35. It says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved me one another, one to another. Okay. Okay, that's, that's that one part of scripture. So how do we learn? Um, how, how did Jesus grow in love? Okay, according to scripture, um, let's look at somewhere and look again, Luke 6, 35. I'm going to read by the grace of God. Um, look at what he says here. He says, but love your enemies and do good and learn hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great. Ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Are you seeing that? Do you, do you get something at the later part of this scripture? Uh, do you notice that whenever God blesses his children, he doesn't desire to get anything out of it? That's one. And uh, even if you praise God and you thank God, or you didn't thank God when he blesses you, he doesn't desire to get anything out from it. There is this love, which I believe that is agape love. It's love that comes from the heart. And it's love that can never be produced except the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, one thing I, I will say is that everything I'll be preaching today, even in the Sunday fire service also, it cannot be gotten in one day. It's a process. So nobody gets all these things in one day because you might, might want to try to do some certain things, but you cannot because it's level by level and it's step by step. That's how the spiritual world is like. So you keep climbing, 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 climbing until you are perfected by the special grace of God. So don't be so fast because you want to perfect in it and all the rest, but rather ask for the grace so that you can walk in it. So how did Jesus grow in love? First and foremost, it was by loving his enemies. So you see that enemies are good. Evil people are good. In short, they are trying to perfect scriptures in your life and they are trying to fulfill scripture in your life and all the rest. If we don't have evil people, and if people didn't do, because Jesus is a perfect example here, though I could use other people, you know, and all the rest, and we could use different examples, even personal experience and all the rest. But I believe that in this discipleship class, we've told ourselves, you know, to just keep looking at Jesus and definitely also give examples by the special, special grace of God from our personal life also. So how did Jesus learn um, growing love? It was by loving his enemy, loving those that persecuted him. Are you seeing why God even allowed those things to happen to Jesus? And why God even allowed those, you know, possibly that we are closest to him to persecute him. It's so that he can learn to love. Now, I cannot say I love, I definitely, naturally, there are people you love. You love your family members. And I love my brothers and sisters, even if they've not done any good thing to me and all the rest. So these things are natural. But the, the, the perfect or the perfect understanding or the, the beauty of love itself is when you do it towards your own enemy, like those that do you evil and those that do you bad and all the rest, and you still begin to love them. This is how people will know that you are disciples of Jesus. Now, another thing I get is that Satan is wicked. Satan is always trying to copy. One of the greatest, um, 
one of the greatest, um, how am I going to put it, um, powers that have stood against Christianity is religion. And Satan has brought other religion. If you look at Islam, they say Islam is a religion of love and all the rest. And they try to do as if they are loving you and try to love and all the rest. But I don't believe those kind of love comes from the heart. They don't love. They cannot perfect this kind of love Jesus is talking of. They can just love people in the external world and all the rest because somebody does good and all the rest. But what about people that did evil to them and all the rest? You see an Islam person doing that or a Muslim. So Satan always tries to take things from the surface and he's trying to copy what we have in the word of God and all the rest. So the only way I can get this is also by trying to love my enemies and all the rest. And that's why we have them all around. That's why God has allowed you know, all those people. It could even be your husband. It could be people that have left you and all the rest. And it could be people that have trampled on you and all the rest. And you know what God is expecting. And how do I know I love people? It's very easy. Two things. I desire to pray for them. And in my own heart, in my own heart, deep in my heart, I desire that let it be well with this person, just as it is well with me. So whatsoever I wish myself, I wish this person, let it be well with him. Lord, you blessed me so much. Bless this other person the way you bless me. And let this person go far in life the way it goes far. So you see that in my own heart, I now begin to obey the second commandment of love. You know the second commandment of love? You know, there are two parts, loving God and now loving your neighbor as yourself and all the rest. So you can learn this, you know, through every problem we go through. So you see that it's not instantaneously. Nobody gets the fruit instantaneously. When I was growing up in Christendom, I always think during the first years of my conversion, I'm still growing, but during the early years of my conversion, that's the first, second years and all the rest, I always think that the fruit of the Spirit is something you just get, boom, and it just enters inside of you, boom, and it's now finished and all the rest. So I think that the fruit was always like gifts. Until I realized that you stay yes, in short, that is the reason why God has allowed us to be on this earth. If not, when you die, He would have taken me to heaven. When you got converted, or when I got converted, why did He take me to heaven? He's teaching me to grow in grace like Jesus. Another thing you get here again is um, fellowship with the Father. If somebody can read 7, 1 John 4 7, and all the rest, fellowship with the Father is, um, is, is very important. And, um, and this is how you love. If you want to have this true love, this true love that comes from heaven, you must contact something from heaven. You must contact the power from heaven because this love comes from on high. It comes from the Father. The Father is love. I've told us before that nobody sees the Father in heaven. Nobody sees the Father. The only thing you see about the Father is his attributes, which is his love. And you'll see that through his son, Jesus Christ himself and all the rest. So I don't know if we can read there, First John 4, 7 and all the rest. If we are there, you can read. You can read um, so that we get what the Holy Spirit is trying to say. Um, so I enjoy. How do I? How do I love? First and foremost, I must learn to enjoy fellowship with the Father. So look at this. I think of the abundant grace of God upon my life, and I think of His mercy, and I think of His love, and I think of where He's taking me from, and I think of all the good things He's done for me that I did not deserve, and all the rest. This thing should make me to do the same to others. That's why when I'm trying to do something to another person and all the rest, I'm doing it not based on any other thing, but because I feel that God has been so good to me and God has been so kind to me and all the rest. So I should reciprocate this love. You can imagine I sin against the Lord and I do a lot of things that are wrong and God still forgives me. He shows me his love. He showers me with his blessing and all the rest. And because his grace is abundant in my life. Now, because of I am having fellowship with the Father, I am getting these things, you know, by the virtue of fellowship and fellowship and fellowship and fellowship and fellowship because of this same fellowship i have with the father now i am understanding the love of god i'm getting it directly from the throne of grace with what he's done to me i do to others that's why the bible says do to others you know what you um expect them also to do to you also i don't know if we can read there first john first john 4 7 first john 4 7 Okay. Hallelujah. My Bible has yes. gone in the first oh, John. Love one another. For, for love is of God. Okay. Everyone that loves it is born of God and knoweth God. Okay. So you see, it says everyone that loveth is born of God. So um, what I, in my conviction, basically many of the fruit of the Spirit, all these things have been given to us by virtue of spiritual birth. 
Because when I get born again, the seed of God begins to abide inside of me. So now it begins to grow and it begins to grow and it begins to grow and it begins to grow. So because um, whenever you come to the Lord, if truly you came to the Lord, because I don't believe that everybody are truly born again and all the rest. Some people, I don't know, their experiences are very much funny. But that's why I've come to realize that salvation and experiences differ a lot. If I come to the Lord, the seed of God abides inside of me. And as it abides inside of me, the fruit of the spirit abides. So it now begins to grow, you know, like you see that begins to sprout up and all the rest. And how does this thing, you know, happen? How do I now keep growing in love like Jesus was growing? Connection with the Father. There's another, there's another thing, I think, another thing that um, is, you had me here and is hardly being preached in Christian dogma. This is based on my own personal experience. It's fellowship with the Father. I've come to realize that you can understand and you can know the Father as a personality himself and all the rest. And this thing will only come by fellowship, constant fellowship. You begin to understand who he is and how he operates and his attributes and all the rest. And you begin to get it. When you are so immersed in intimacy and all the rest, you are, you are, so, you are so in line and fellowship and fellowship and fellowship. And you want to know him. It's like when you begin to see his glory, you want to die. Sometimes fellowship with the father is able to kill you it can kill you sometimes because it kills it kills so much of you you're like where's is, where is this god coming from you know who is he and all the rest so when i begin to understand him and all the rest he helps me to now show other people the same thing that i have gotten from the father another part of it is you know um that i realize is seeing everyone as god's creation seeing everyone as god's creation now you know one thing i must realize is that I hope you know that everyone was created by God. <laughs> Even those that are not in the way of the Lord are created by God. I hope you know. Because sometimes we might think that only the Christians are created by God. And these ones are not created by God. Maybe the Muslims and the Buddhists, everyone are created by God. But everyone's, everyone are not sons of God. That's the only difference. We all are created by God, but we all are not sons. We all are not sons. Not everybody are sons. Some people are slaves. And all the rest, because they are still slaves to sin and they are slaves to the devil and all the rest. And so once I realized that everybody has been created by the Lord God Almighty, one father, one father, he created all of us with his own image and likeness. We have been created in his own image and likeness. Then I should be able to love those people now because the same thing, the same, I should realize that the same person that created me is the same person that created that person at the roadside and all the rest. And I believe that this was why, you know, Jesus was able to show a lot of love to people around him because he realized that these people also, possibly maybe they are ignorant of truth and all the rest. They were created by one father. They were created by one God and all the rest. Possibly they have not understood truth and all the rest. If these things can be written in our life, you'll see that it's going to be easy to love. And another thing again is that um, love is, I, I, I call it, a, it's a burden. It's, it's like a burden bearing. It's like a burden bearer and all the rest. If you notice something about Jesus, the proof of love, the proof that I love is that I'm able to show it in action. That's one. It's just like somebody says, you know, um, you say you love God and you love God and somebody is sick on the road and you say you love him or I love you and, and you cannot give up yourself and give up something for the person or give him food to eat and all the rest. You have not proved love. You have only said it with your mouth. But it has not come from the bottom of your heart. So you need to prove it. And how did Jesus prove his love for me and you? By dying on the cross. Are you seeing? So that's how Jesus proved his love for you and I. By dying on the cross and by giving up also. So I think that's how you should be in our life and all the rest. If you say you love somebody, you should be able to do so much. Go an extra mile. It's just the same thing most times that we have, you know, maybe possibly when we have some relationship, some relationships that are very much okay and all the rest. We love these people and all the rest. And we say, oh, because of the love I have for this part, particular brother or this particular sister, I could do anything for the person. I could go and extra my for the person and all the rest. So love begins in the heart. It begins in the heart. And that's why, you know, we must be able to cast down every negative imagination from the devil that comes and all the rest. See, I'm called to love. I must not be friends with everybody. I'm not friends with everybody, you know. I must not talk to everybody, you know. There are people that I know in this ministry, again, I don't talk to them. I must not talk to them. I must not take my phone every day and be calling people and all the rest. But I must have a right understanding that, you know, free my heart. Free my heart from any evil thing and any evil stress of this person, you know, because he is also created in the image of God. And she is also created in the image of God. And we are also created in the image of God. And we are sons and daughters of God. So I believe that also this is another way that Jesus was, you know, loving people. He understood that we all are from one father. 
and all the rest. And I pray that God is going to help us. And, you know, personally for me, you know, um, what can I do my personal experience? Um, let's look at John um, 15, um, verse 12. Look at what, um, look at what Jesus says. Oh, I got that right. Okay. Um, he says here that, that this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. You see? Now, look at that. As the Father has loved Jesus, as the Father has shown Jesus so much mercy, and he's shown Jesus so much grace. Don't think that everything Jesus did was by his own power. It was by the grace of the living God and all the rest. Because as he was on earth, he was man. And he was also having the nature of God. But he subjected himself to be man while on earth. So it was God's grace that helped him to do all he could do and all the rest. That's why Jesus lived a wonderful life, if it's not for the grace of God. So he was always looking at the Father. Look at what he now says. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. As I have loved you. In our fellowship, ye love one another. Ye love one another. As I have showed you love. If I have shown you love in the fellowship and all the rest, Show others that are coming love and let's let us show each other love. Let, let's let's embrace love. If I've shown you love, if I've cared for you, and if I've done some certain things for you and all the rest, then let it go like that. You know, that's what it's called. You know, it's like a triangle, you know. The same way Jesus shows me love and he's been good to me and he's been merciful to me and he's blessed me mightily. And I say, ah, I must transfer this same love that he has done to me to others. So you see, there's no way I can understand this except I have fellowship and all the rest. So it's his abundant grace, you know. Um, there was there was a particular um, brother of mine, um, possibly related, and all the rest, and um, he did something to me, you know, that was very much, you know. If I begin to explain this, you know, you might feel like crying and all the rest. I, I say, why would my own brother do this to me, you know? Uh, somebody you're related with, and he did me some certain things and all the rest. And to be very much sincere with you, I was so pissed off. I, I was like. You know, God, I know that God is going to visit me in his own time because there were a whole lot of stuff that God has told me. And I said, I know that when the time comes, God is going to have his way in my life and all the rest, you know, and he's going to set me free from all the troubles in my father's house. And um, look, look at and what did the Holy Spirit impress in my spirit? Show him love. There is no way I'll be able to talk to this, my brother, and convert him and all the rest without showing him love. And how do I show him love? I prove it. I have to prove it, you know, by calling him, by sending him text messages. If I was not doing that before, I, I don't know, I don't know how, you know, that love just came inside of my spirit. This was somebody that I felt in my spirit that, oh, you, you know, what, what you did to me, you know, the Lord is going to have his vengeance against you or something like that. But you know, as time goes on, because the Holy Spirit spoke to me, listen to me, it's not enough to know the word of God. It's not enough to know the word of God. I stand by what I'm saying now. It's not enough to know the word of God. If you want to grow, it's enough to hear the voice of God. Knowing the word of God and hearing the voice of God are two different things entirely. So one of the things that helps you to grow so much and possibly grow in love and everything is as you hear the word, you hear his voice. And you hear his voice. You hear his voice. You hear his voice. He tells you what to do. And he tells you because at that point in time, you know, I was very furious with this, my brother, and all the rest. You know, you can imagine he wanted to even do the things of God and the way he was always accusing you, doing a lot of things like that. But you know, how is it now that what shows that I truly have love for this young man and all the rest is because the evil he has done me, you see that evil, wickedness is in such a way working all together for good. All things working together for good. Those that killed Jesus did all those things. He's always working together. In short, they were training Jesus to love. So you see, if those things didn't happen to Jesus, Jesus is not going to know the strength of his love. And he's not going to know the strength of his power. And if it did not happen to me and all the rest, and you know, possibly, and my brother was very good to me and all the rest, and I show him mercy and I show him love, I've not loved him. I've only done what anybody would do. Even the heathens do that, and the Muslims do the same thing that I do and all the rest. But in the midst of all the troubles, and in the midst of all the things that he's done to me and all the rest, you can still say and still love him. And you show it out. And by the grace of God, the Lord will impress him. And I give him some certain things. Take this, brother. Take this, brother. I love you. My heart is free. You know, my heart is free. You know, that's to show it. I'm, I'm showing it. And you show it in prayer. So how do I know? I now begin to pray for him. Lord, bless this, my brother. Lord, be with him. Lord, let your grace be upon him and all the rest. See, listen to me. Me doing all those things, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything to me. It only helps me. It only crushes the self inside of me that wants me to prevent vengeance. 
vengeance. You know, there's this part of you that wants you to get vengeance. Like, listen to me very much. Uh, it's very better for God to even get vengeance than you getting vengeance. Because you think you know it the right way. But God knows how to do it the best way and all the rest. God knows how to repay everything in his own timing and all the rest. So it's not for you. The battle is not for you. You see, another thing you must understand is that who are you fighting? Who are you fighting? Not human beings. So that's why don't get this conviction and think that during our prayers we are fighting. I don't fight human beings. What's my business with human beings? How can you stop a man that God has sent? How can you stop a man of science and wonders? You can't stop him and all the rest. That's not who I want to face. It's Satan himself. That's my target. You, you, Satan. That's my target. You, the demons. That's my target and all the rest. So you see that whenever the enemy is trying to do some certain things, it's not really that person. It's the devil himself. That's our number one prime target. And we are not called to love the devil. <laughs> I don't think so. I've never seen anywhere in scripture where the Bible tells me to love the devil. You don't love the devil. In short, because I hate the devil because of his works are evil. And he doesn't love truth. And he, he lies from the beginning. Lie is inside of him. I don't love him because everything he does is against the sovereignty, the power, and the authority of Jesus Christ and all the rest. Let it be like that in our fellowship. Everybody will love each other. Sister, Sister Osagele, you know, she loves Sister Kokube. And, you know, every one of us, you know, Sister Christy, and, you know, the same thing, you know, with um, Brother Sunday and um, Sister Doris. All of us, you know, um, we love each other, you know, and Brother Godwin, you know, with Brother Chutes, and, you know, we love each other, and, you know, Brother Paul, and, you know, with um, Sister, um, um, what's her name, Christ, Sister uh, uh, Maureen. Also, every one of us, you know, we love each other, and we are showing it, and all the rest, and this person is in problem, and this person is in need, and all the rest. And because of our genuine heart, because we know that these are children of the living God, as if these ones are created by the most high living God, then we allow it to radiate. It starts from the heart. And God looks at the heart. It might not be by facial expression and all the rest. You know, sometimes maybe my mom now, my, my dad might think, you know, oh, because I don't call my dad and all the rest, it means that I don't love him. No, no, this thing is inside of the spirit, you know, inside of me, deeply inside of me, you know. I love you so much. Oh, that's Sister Chewing. You know, Brother Jose shows a lot of love to Sister Chewing. I know the rest. She says I didn't call her. And uh, okay, let me call everybody. And Sister Cynthia shows a lot of love, you know, to um, Sister Christiana and all the rest, and to 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 um, Sister Pascaline. And so you know, we we spread out the love and and we share the love to each other, you know. And when we meet the people and when we want to give them the sermon and when we want to preach the message to them, you see that they have not eaten. You know, take some little bit of dollars and take some little bit of euro and say, oh, take that brother. You see, that's the same thing Jesus would do. So Jesus was not just going about healing people and doing some mighty works and all the rest. The Bible says that, you know, there's a song wherever he went, he was doing good. In the full sermon of today, I'm going to let us something, the, 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 the um, similarity between goodness of God and love. These things are in line with each other and all the rest. They are, they are very similar. The goodness of God, you know, it comes from a heart of love. Wherever he went, he was doing good. He was doing good. So he was not just healing people. Almighty healer, heal the lame man. When the people saw him, they started wondering. Wherever he went, my Lord was doing good. You see that whenever a child of God, wherever you go, if you send a child of God to the dungeon, he makes him part there. If you send him to hellfire, he makes him part there, you know. And if you send him to heaven, he makes him part there. Wherever a child of God goes to, you know, it makes him part, you know, because he's a son of the living God. And let it be like that in our life. The brothers and sisters here, we love each other, we, we speak love and we preach it. Let it be inside of you. Desire it. It's a choice you make. It's a choice you make to love. And you preach it, you talk about it, you do it, you, you show it, you give. You give. You cannot give without loving people and all the rest. You give, you do it, you know, selflessly and all the rest. And that's the spirit of heaven. And that's the mind of heaven. And when you're doing this thing all the time, the father is going to tell the angel that, look, that, that's my son and all the rest. It's not going to be hard for you to do mighty work. It's not going to be hard for you to prophesy, to raise the dead, and to do mighty works and all the rest. Because the fruit is there. This is my own conviction also. Every fruit of the spirit is related to love. Because love in the spiritual world is the highest of it all. It's the highest of it all. Like I say, we don't get there at once. It's a step. Because there is a particular message I listened to. And I was listening to the message. I think it was a heavenly encounter of a brother. And he was saying something about love. That the Holy Spirit was interpreting the scripture on love. That's the way I see. The Holy Spirit was interpreting scriptures. Oh, this is what I mean in this scripture and all the rest. And the thing really blew my mind. You know? And in my mind, I was like, 
I'm going to perfect all these things that this brother has said or the Holy Spirit has said. The next part of that sermon I should listen to was telling me, I know that some people, when they listen to this, they want to do everything that is here, you know. They just want to say, wow, so the Holy Spirit just caught me now, you know. <laughs> and I said that to myself, I'm going to do everything that I see here. And before you know it, the next part of the sermon, the brother was saying, I know that once you listen to this, you want to do everything, you know, and all the rest, you see. Let's calm down. It's gradually. <laughs> and I said, wow, the Holy Spirit, you caught me there, you know. The Holy Spirit is very, is, 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 it, it has humor and all the rest. So let's not think that, you know, it's just one spirit that stands there and all the rest. If you are very much sensitive to his spirit, you understand that he's always there around you, you know, he's always watching, you know, just like as I'm preaching, he's sitting there and he's watching and all the rest. That's the power of faith and all the rest. And I believe that, you know, from the days when I came to the Lord and all the rest, that the Holy Spirit has you know, always been there. And he's the only one that can give us these things, you know, and he's the only one that can help us, you know. But let's desire, let's have a desire to walk towards it and all the rest. And the Holy Spirit is going to help us in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not saying that after you listen to this sermon, you know, maybe that witch in your house, you know, and all the rest, you begin to say, no, 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 come to my house now, come to my house and come and live with me, you, uh, Bertrand has talked to us now, I know you're a witch, but come and live with me, that's no wisdom, you know, that's no wisdom, it doesn't mean that, you know, um, because Jesus wanted to show love, and he says, Pilate, oh, don't worry, Pilate, come to my room, let's live together, Pilate, and let's, eat. no, no, that's no wisdom and all the rest, see, wisdom is profitable to direct and all the rest, it doesn't mean that because I want to love people now, I should not foolishly do some certain things. No and no and no. It is in the heart. In my heart. Is my heart clean towards this person? And is my heart purified towards this sister? And is my heart purified towards this um, this thing? There's a particular sister I just had to do some certain things. I deleted her up and all the rest. It doesn't mean in my heart. I even pray for her and all the rest. My heart is clean and all the rest is pure. But, you know, it doesn't mean that I now have to, you know, begin to do some certain things that I was doing before. No, that's not wisdom. And all the rest. So let's learn this so that we don't say, oh, now brother has preached this love and all the rest. So let me start doing this. You know, <laughs> you know come here, come here, come here. And, you know, even your mother in law, you bring your mother in law and she scatters your house for you and all the rest. Oh, father in law, come here and all the rest. I love you so much. So that's not what I'm trying to say here. And all the rest. So it's divine wisdom. And I pray that the Holy Spirit is going to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay. So that's all that the Holy Spirit has for us today until we get to. You know, the fire service where we get the full meat that the Holy Spirit has prepared for us. Um, okay, I leave it back to question and answers. Back to Sister Pascaline. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank, thank you, Brother Chedose. Thank you so much for that message on love. So it's now time for question and answer. Please, if you have a question, unmute your mic and ask your question so that our brother can answer it. We are all Bible students. Do we know everything in the Bible? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I have a question. Sorry, I can't be a video. Sorry for that. Okay. You know, um, this love, 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 love. We have been preaching about it indeed. You know, um, I don't know. This is how I feel. I just want to express it out. When you feel some love, I mean, knowing that you love everyone inside your mind, and uh, you try to let people know that you love them, but they feel that you don't love them. I don't, I, I don't know how to explain this, but inside you, you have those people in your mind, and you truly really love them with a perfect love. But they keep treating you the bad way. Indeed, the Bible says we should love our enemies. But even in the point of death, Jesus loved. But my question is just this. When you love, love, love to extend that you can no longer, is it possible that somebody can love, you can no longer control the love? Because sometimes it happens to some people, it happens to me that you, you love some people. I'm not talking about what they love, I'm talking about genuine love of Jesus Christ. You love that, you feel like dashing up even everything you have because you love. I mean, is it possible that the love is uncontrollable? 
I don't know if you understand this question. I don't know how to put it. But I believe the man of God is there. He understands me. So, I don't know how to ask this question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, like, um, uncontrollable love or something like that. Uh, right? Like, you love somebody and, you know, um, it's so deep. Like, is that, is that what you're trying to say? And, uh, and maybe they don't see it or something like that. Is that what you're trying to say? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Exactly. That uh, even you can do anything. You can even you can even give up your life for because you love this genuine love of Jesus Christ. You know, I don't know <laughs> that even yeah. sometimes when you remember the problems, you can even you know share tears or not. I, I believe, you know, love is very deep. It's too powerful. In the sense that the Bible says that love is more powerful than death or so. I don't know if I can remember in the Psalmist or in the Songs of Solomon also. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a height we get to also. I don't know as many persons that have gotten there and all the rest. But I know that there are people that feel like this. Uh, do I have a question to ask? Um, so, but I know that there are people that feel like that and all the rest. So I, I think it's not it's not wrong. See, the main thing here is that let your heart be let your heart be pure. That's the main thing. That's even what God loses us. A pure heart. Let your heart be pure. You can love someone and maybe the person or maybe you know your neighbors around and all the rest. They don't see it and all the rest. As long as your heart is pure, is pure before the sight of God. Then Bible says that if your spirit does not you know condemn you, so. Let no man condemn you also. So let your heart be pure as one. And about the uncontrollable, uncontrollable love, so like you said, I believe it's possible. It's a, it's a level of, you know, love that we, we, we get to. Most times, people even feel that, you know, possibly when they are in a, should I use the word, like a genuine relationship? I don't know. Is, it, is that not love? Uh, uh, a genuine relationship, is that not love? <laughs> That's love also. And you know they feel that they can give up anything for this person and all the rest. So I don't know. You know, everybody is different. It all depends on the level that you are in. Possibly you have gotten to a level, you know, that I've not even gotten to and all the rest. Okay. Um, so I believe it's possible. But let your heart be pure. Amen. Praise the Lord. I have, a yeah, I have another question. So before you go to the next question, uh, let me give a little contribution also. I think what you were say. I think I, I think I got about two questions from you. I don't. I don't know. I'm not sure whether it's so. But uh, let's talk about the controllable one first. I believe, uh, as our sister just contributed here in the chat window, that it is controllable. And um, I don't know the exact reference to scripture, but I know that um, the Bible talks about us having um, self control, temperance, meekness, and things like that. So we are to be able to control everything, including the spirit uh, of prophecy or so, because the spirit of, of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So when pro even the spirit of God that wants to you know, burst out of you at this moment and just begin to prophesy while we are answering questions. Now, let's say prophecy comes to me now. Let's say if I'm a prophet now, prophecy comes to me. I just want to start prophesying and just come confusion in the meeting that's not uh, the spirit of God. So I should be able to control that prophecy that's coming in me and be in order in this meeting so that the meeting can proceed in, in the way that is going on. So if we can control the, the spirit of God, the spirit, the gift of the spirit in us, which is like so powerful, God himself manifesting in us. So, so love, we can also control love, which is love, agape love. So self-control is possible, even with love. Um, and then the first part, I thought I got a question out of the first part of your question, which was that you, you know, love maybe some people and they don't know that you love them or so, something like that. So I think from the man of God's teaching, love is demonstrated. It's not just a feeling in your heart. So there is something, some action that comes with 
genuine love. So the actions, maybe that you, maybe those people, if they don't know that you love them, maybe you can do some certain actions that will show that you love them and that, that will dispel the myth from their you know, minds. That's all I have to contribute for that. Okay, praise the Lord. I have another question. I'm so sorry. I'm the only one asking. Sorry. Okay. Now, another question is it because the man of God made a comment concerning that everybody is the child of God and he created everybody. And indeed, he did God created everybody. Um, okay, give me one minute. Praise the Lord. Sorry for time wasting. So he created everybody. Now, when you see uh, these Muslim children, these their children, you know, little ones, and you ask yourself, God, is this this one? Did these little ones still going to perish? You know, uh, you know, all these children that knows nothing. So, what would be the end of those children? I don't know. It may be out of the what you are teaching right now, but I don't. I'm going to check something into that because it doesn't have really bothered me. And some, but we are the definition of this children. You know? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Praise the Lord. I mean, I mean, like uh, these Muslims, you know, they are not believers. They are children. Those little ones that knows nothing. What would be their destination? I don't know because you made a comment. That is why I bring this up. Okay, we say that you know, based on my conviction and all the rest. See, I, I think it's also according to the word of God. As long as somebody does not know, you know, the the difference between good and evil and all the rest, whether they are they are, they are see, they are they are deep things that I don't want to say right now because if I say it, you might not people might not understand it and all the rest. So let me just leave that about who are sons of the devil. There are some people that are not even sons of God at all. And these things are based on other people's experience, which I believe that they are scriptural, but it will take me time to begin to go deep and all the rest. But if it's for some of all these religious folks, whereby they give birth to their children in such religion, and these people didn't know the difference between good and evil, let's say they are still babies and all the rest, once they die, they go to heaven. <laughs> As you remember, David, even the, the child of David and all the rest, David already had faith, he already understood that this young man has got sent back to the Lord and all the rest, and after which he stood up and he rejoiced, and he glorified the name of the Lord, and all the rest. So once a baby, one that has not come to understanding or reasoning, automatically just gets to heaven, whether he's a Buddhist. But also, I say there are things now that I'm, I might not be able to say because of time and all the rest. There are children that come as a result of, they come from Satan. Now, this is another mystery that is, it might be hard to understand, uh, there are children that are that are sent for destruction. In short, they are not real. That's why at some point in time they die. And when they die, they go back to the sea. Uh, there are some certain things now about demons and demons even trying to manifest themselves in human flesh. That's why be careful for where you go and seek for children and seek for that and seek for this because somehow Satan will collect what belongs to him and all the rest. So that's another thing now that I, I said it might it might it might be it might take time or it might look somehow to explain it here and all the rest. But I pray God will help. But if it's for the one that you are talking of, you know, maybe basically about uh, the Muslims and all these people. Once the children don't have understanding of anything, once they die, they get to heaven. Even if rapture takes place, there are babies that they will just even the ones in the mother's womb. Just go. They don't know you. <laughs> they are pure. They don't, they don't know anything good or evil. And there's another mystery again. They will stay in heaven and they will grow up in heaven. That's another thing I'm not able to say right now. So there are a whole lot of things that possibly I might have understanding of, but I've decided not to share them because it will take time to understand, except maybe the Holy Spirit now helps us. Also. So what happens when a baby gets to heaven or so? He stays. He still learns to grow and all the rest, and he's presented on the altar before the presence of the Father, something happens again. He now grows up to its normal form that it was supposed to be on the earth. Maybe the destiny was truncated at some point in time. So these are some certain things, because 
at some point in time, everybody must grow to a particular age. In heaven, in heaven there is a particular youthful um, age everybody comes up to. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So let me just stop there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother, I hope your questions were answered at least to a certain level. Um, we just have one clarification, which I thought, you know, maybe I think you said that um, he said that everybody is a child of God. But I don't think he said that because everybody is not a child of God. There are some that are children of the devil, but everybody is a creation of God. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we have come to the end of the discipleship class. By the grace of God, we are already over time. So we're just going to end the meeting now. And we are going to start the worship service right now. Please, so just remain where you are. Amen.